can use the podium. Do you prefer the podium? <laughs> Hi. Ani varikum vanakam. Podium paavikava, ladi thalandu pesa vandhani paprachne arakada. முதல் முதலாவது இங்க ஃபெட்னாக்கு என்னை ஃபெட்னாக்கு என்னை அழைச்சதுக்கு மிகவும் நன்றி மிஸ்டர் செல்லையா மற்ற குழுவினர் அனைவருக்கும் இந்த நிகழ்ச்சியை இப்ப இவ்வளவு இவ்வளவு பெருசா நடத்துறதுக்கு நடத்தி முடிக்கிறதுக்கு உண்மையில ஒரு இந்த என்ஜின் என்ஜின் வந்து உண்மையில இந்த தொண்டர்கள் தான் மற்ற மைக்கப் ஆயிருக்கவா இந்த நிகழ்ச்சியை உண்மையில இவ்வளவு நல்லா செய்ய முடிக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரே ஒரு காரணம் தொண்டர்கள் தான் முதல் முதலாவது உண்மையில இந்த ஃபெட்னாவுக்கு இந்த கான்ஃபரன்ஸுக்கு கஷ்டப்பட்டு உழைக்கிற அனைத்து தொண்டர்களுக்கும் எங்கள் உங்களோட உங்கள் பலத்த கரவோசம் நான் என்னுடைய உரை தமிழிலேயும் ஆங்கிலத்திலையும் கலந்து தான் உரையாற்ற வேண்டும் ஏனென்றா எனக்கு எப்போவுமே இருக்கிற அந்த முக்கியம் இந்த வந்து எங்களோட இளையோருக்கு மற்ற தமிழ் விளங்காத ஏனிய மக்கள் அனைவருக்கும் எங்களுடைய என்னுடைய மெசேஜ் என்னுடைய போய் சேர வேண்டும் என்றது தான் என்னுடைய ஆசையும் கோரிக்கையும் அதனால நான் ஏழு மாதிரி அளவு தமிழையும் பேசி ஆங்கிலத்தையும் கல ஆங்கிலத்தையும் கலந்து தான் பேசுவேன் மற்றது நான் இப்போவே சொல்ல வேண்டும் என்னென்றால் இங்கே மேடையில் முதல் பேசிய பேசிய பெரியோர் மாதிரி என்னுடைய தமிழ் வராது அஞ்சு வயசில் கனடாவுக்கு சென்று கனடாவில் படித்த தமிழ் தான் என்னுடைய தமிழ் ஆனால் அதனால் இங்கே அங்கே பிள்ளைகள் இருந்தால் மன்னிச்சு கொள்ளுங்கள் முதலே சொல்லிடுறேன் தமிழர்களின் விருந்தோம்பலை பற்றி உலகங்கும் எல்லாரும் சொல்லுவேன் அதை நான் உண்மையிலே முதல் முதல் கண் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் பண்ணியிருக்கேன் இன்றைக்கு இந்த ஃபெட்னா ஆர்கனைசர்ஸோடு அதுக்கு ஒன்ஸ் அகேன் தேங்க்யூ வெரி மச் மிஸ்டர் செல்லையா இங்கே வந்து என்ன பேச அழைச்ச போது கேட்டார் ப்ளீஸ் ராதிகா கேன் யூ ஸ்பீக் அபவுட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் அண்ட் யுவர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் அண்ட் வட் லெட் யூ டு திஸ் விக்டரி Uh, to become the first member of parliament in Canada from Tamil heritage. So Adhiku, in order to talk about my experiences, I think I have to go back to the beginning, the mi- migration story. So in Ilangayil Prandu, I don't know if I'm going to know how many people are, so it's okay. In the third time, I'm going to know how many people are, செவன்டி எயிட் ராயட்ஸுக்கு பிறகு தான் பிறந்தது ஸோ அப்போவே அந்த குழப்பம் வர தொடங்கிட்டு பிரச்சனைகள் வர தொடங்கிட்டது நாட்டில் எண்பத்தி ரெண்டாம் ஆண்டு அப்பா இலங்கை விட்டு வலிக்கிட்டார் எங்களுக்கு இன்னொரு புது வீடு புது வீடு புது இடம் தேடுறதுக்காக அப்போ வலிக்க அப்பா அப்போவே வலிக்கிட்டு போயிட்டார் அண்ட் தென் த ராயட்ஸ் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் ராயட்ஸுக்கு பிறகு த there was more of a urgence to leave the country um and so my father actually if you in the the video la video montage la you had a little bit of my migrant story that i have on my youtube channel and you if you watch it you learn that uh, my father had actually had a workplace accident in canada and wasn't able to work so our sponsorship had been expedited a little bit so that the family could be reunited not was something that was important in canada 25 years ago bringing families together and ensuring that people were respected and families were respected so we came to canada i was 5 um i have to say the story of at the airport i thought that i was the most brilliant child ever i was like mommy mommy ange chitappa mari oral nikkara canada airport le because i didn't know my own father 
This was the first time that I was meeting my father when I was five years old. And so we, um, we, we grew to have a special bond because I was his baby girl, or I am his baby girl, and um, that was the first time that I really was meeting him because that's the first time that I was old enough to know who he was. Um, in the youth session earlier today, I spoke a little bit about my experiences in the schoolyard, at school, when I... I'm going to move away from the podium. I can't really talk. Um, so, the youth, youth sort of, uh, I spoke about my experiences in the playground. Um, when you read about Canadian or American history, you know that the, the emancipation and the, the history of the American and Canadian blacks and how racism was so overt and I had experienced, and this was usually from the 60s and 40s where you hear these stories, but it was something that I experienced in the mid-1980s in Canada. I was out in the playground and none of the children would play with me because I was the unknown and they were kind of scared of me. They would all look and stay away and not want to touch me in case the dirt rubbed off. And I didn't understand. It, in the school, it was just the moon dakka, ten dakka, and then the school layer grore Tamil pilleyala andaneeram. And apu Tamil pilleyala andu mudhe le, na ku unnele vitiya sundariye le, angelam perse teriyada apu. And uh, I didn't understand, but that's when I really learned for first hand the impact that racism could have on a young child. And those are things that I wish that our children growing up today will not have to face. And I do understand, and I do believe from the bottom of my heart that it is something that we can eradicate as we all <laughs> as we all embrace all of the people around us and respect all of us as humans and that we're all the same. We need to hold that unity of all humankind. I veered a little bit from my story. So I learned the importance of Tamar. Um, so Canada came to Tamar, English and Persa. I went to riots in school. I, my formative training that I had in Sri Lanka was um, two months of nursery school. So I didn't really learn too much. I learned chinnan chiru kannan, adhavar varunan thiriyadu anga school le. Appa, inge vandhu thaan angilam padichadu and nangu kada vandhu pudusle perisa vasadhi endu kanakke irukkele, or apartment la andirindhu nangal and Tamil school ukku pooradukku Tamil school vanda over sani kilam kaalam thaan Tamil palikudam irukku. Appa Tamil school ukku pooradukku nangu irundha edathil irundhu over sani kilam kaalamayum மூன்று பஸ் எடுத்து போன நாங்கள் அங்கே எட்டு மணிக்கு தமிழ் பள்ளிக்கூடத்தை நிற்கிறதுக்கு ரெண்டு வருஷம் இந்த ஒவ்வொரு சனிக்கிழமையும் பஸ் எடுத்து போய் பஸ் எடுத்து போய் பஸ் மாறி பஸ் மாறி பஸ் மாறி போய் களைச்சி போனேன் சரியா தமிழ்ன்றத அழுத்துட்டு அதுக்கு பிறகு ஆனால் எங்கள் அப்பாவோ விட இல்லை வீட்டில் தமிழ் தான் நாங்கள் நாலு பேரும் இருந்தோண்டு இங்கிலீஷில் தொடங்கிடுவான் எங்கேயோ இருப்பார் மற்ற தொங்கல் இருந்தோண்டு அவருக்கு கேட்டுடும் பிள்ளையார் என்ன நடக்குது தமிழ் தமிழ் வந்துட்டு போயிடுவார் எங்க எப்ப நாங்க பேச வலிக்கிட்டாலும் தமிழ் தமிழ் வந்துட்டு அவர் போயிடுவார் எல்லாட்டி தமிழுக்கு மாத்தாட்டி அதுலேயே உட்கார்ந்துடுவார் ஸோ உண்மையில் நான் என்னுடைய இந்த தமிழ் அந்த இந்த ஆர்வம் வந்ததுக்கு என்னுடைய பேரண்ட்ஸ் அப்பா அம்மாவுக்கு தான் நான் மிக மிகவும் கடமைப்பட்டிருக்கேன் நன்றியும் தெரிவிக்க வேணும் 
സോ ചണ്ടു വർഷം എന്ന് ബസ് പോകുന്ന ആ പ്രവീൺ കാലത്തിട്ടൻ സ്വന്നതാണ് സോ എന്നെ ഒരു സേവ് വിളി കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ടാൽ ഐ ഡിസൈഡ് ടു ഡു മൈ ഫസ്റ്റ് ആക്ട് ഓഫ് കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് ദാറ്റ് വാസ് മൈ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഓഫ് ബീങ് എൻ ഏജൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ചേഞ്ച് ഐ ഡിസൈഡ് ദാറ്റ് വിത്ത് മൈ ഫാദർ ദാറ്റ് വി നീഡ് എ തമിൾ സ്കൂൾ ക്ലോസർ ടു ഹോം ഇഫ് ഐ എം ഗൺ ടു ലേൺ തമിൾ ഇറ്റ് നീഡ്സ് ടു ബി സംതിങ് ദാറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് സോ ഹാർഡ് ഫോർ മീ സോ with my father we went and contacted the local school board trustee um everybody knows what a school board trustee is right it's the same here in the us i think okay so um we went and contacted the local school board trustee and found out what do we need to do in order to start tamil school closer to our house and the requirement was that we needed to have at least 30 25 people in the local community sign up for classes so that's what we did we made little flyers i cut them up because we didn't have fancy printers or anything sat there cutting flyers we canvassed the neighborhood knocked on doors that we knew had tamil people in it got them to fill out registration forms and started a tamil class that was closer to home with the catholic school board Seventeen or something years later now, it's, a, it's part of the international language program with the Dufferin Peel Catholic School Board, has over 10 locations, many, many classes, and has affected so many of our Tamil youth, and even mixed Tamil youth, because about five years ago, I was a Tamil instructor for two years, and I had children who were not even Tamil. coming to learn tamil so we are now spreading tamil and the awareness of tamil and the passion the love for tamil beyond only tamils in canada <laughs> little did i know that as a 7 year old i was just being lazy i didn't want to travel i didn't want to take three buses anymore but this is why when i speak to our youth no matter how old you are no matter how you think you're impacting the world you can have a huge impact you just don't know it yet and that's why even this little one right here can be the next prime minister of canada this one can be the next president of the united states if she was born here <laughs> we can all be change agents it doesn't matter age shouldn't be the limiting factor So I learned importance of Tamil and then um culture. Ye, the Tamil culture. What when growing up originally, I thought Tamil culture meant pengalunda adakka odukkama irukkavanam, veete aakal vanda thethani potu kudukkavanam. Um uh where in That's it. Oh, thalam ennita valakkavanam. Um adhan Tamil culture and don't nerchu kondu valandathu. And then uh பரதநாட்டியம் பழக வலிக்கிட்டேன் பரதநாட்டியம் பழ படிக்க வேண்டும் என்ற ஆசை வந்தது அண்ட் அப்பா அம்மா இன்னத்தில் ஆசை வந்தாலும் ஊக்கி விடுவினேன் ஸோ மூன்று பேரையும் பரதநாட்டியத்துக்கு அனுப்பிச்சினேன் அண்ட் பரத கலை மூலம்தான் உண்மையில் நான் இந்த தமிழர்களின் வரலாற்று வரலாற்றுக்களை படித்தேன் இந்த கலை மூலம்தான் உண்மையில் என்னுடைய கலாச்சாரத்தை பற்றி அறிஞ்சது நான் பரத கலை மற்றது இப்போ இந்த மேடை நாடகங்கள் செய்ய வழிக்கிட்டேன் நான் மிஸ்டர் கே எஸ் பாலச்சந்திரன் மூட பாலச்சந்திரனுடைய ஒன் ஆஃப் மை ஆக்டிங் குருஸ் இன் கனடா அண்ட் ஐ லேர்ன் அலாட் த்ரூ த ஆர்ட்ஸ் அபவுட் அவர் கல்ச்சர் தமிழின் தமிழ் சோ ரிச் and that, that's why it's a, it's a classical language semmoliyana tamil moli undu ellarum paaduvena mana unmele semmoli unda innende vilangama semmoliyana tamil moliyam endu onnu paadikonu therinjadu only now i learn that the the richness of it because of the vast amount of literature that we have the cultural ties the the the, the language and i don't think i'll ever 
become an expert. And in Nuri experts I don't think I'll ever reach that. And uh, I'll only continue to strive to improve and to learn more. Um, but learning the Tamil culture and the language, but living and growing up in Canada meant that I was having an identity crisis. I was trying to learn who I was, trying to understand who is Radhika Sitsabayisan. I didn't know then because, uh, like I told in the youth group earlier today, I grew up as Rathika sits a basin. My grade one teacher, I sat there, called me Rathika. I said, uh-huh. Twelve years later, I was still being called Rathika. But only as an adult, only when I reached university, I really understood that it's okay to really know who I am. It's good to celebrate. It's good to understand my heritage and celebrate it and wear it on my sleeve. So that's why even in the middle of a lecture with 500 people, the professor picks me out and said, yes, Rathika? I'd say, uh, it's Radhika. Ra, Radhika. They learn. And, and then, in the upper pair, sit the pace and in the larum lutudina. And a sit sabail adum eason, sit sabay eason. In the upper pair, sit sabay eason. And then, Pirimea, Elarkin Sholikon to Ripen, sit sabay eason in the, and I learn sit the pace and a matadinum. So, said Nakulavarakum, in the pair, Radhika, sit sabay eason. I have to talk about this dual identity a little bit and the difference in the expectations that we as a community have. Um, looking around in the audience today, now, and earlier today, walking around, I noticed that almost, and in the youth group as well, almost all of the females are wearing saris, alerti salvars. And Angar, Siller, Verti Potrikinam, Siller Tarwachi Katirikinam, and a Paler, Pants and Shirtam. Is that fair? <laughs> and <laughs> And uh, I had come from straight from the airport. I was wearing a dress. And one of the two names told me, Radhika, why Radhika? You're a Tamil MP. You're wearing a dress. We have to get you into a sari. And I was like, I'm coming straight from the airport. I really wanted to come and participate. I'm planning on wearing a sari later anyway. And the expectation under the we have that unfair expectation on our women and on our youth. Our young women are feeling that pressure. And we as a community, we as a community that has heightened awareness needs to be aware of that and be mindful of what we are instilling in our youth. I'm an advocate for our, the empowerment of our youth, especially our young women. And if we as a community are telling them that you need to act in a different way than your brother does, we're setting up a dual standard right from a year, very, very young age, and we cannot do that. I see my young sisters who really enjoyed that. <laughs> I wish somebody said it when I was growing up, so for you. Um, so why I got into politics, everybody asks me, you know, well, you're so young, especially as a female, you know, what made you, what possessed you to get into politics? And 
I really don't think of it as politics because for me, I come from a background of community development and I'm seeing politics as a vehicle to further the community development work that I do, that I've done, and so much more that needs to be done. So that's why I'm in politics. And the other thing is that because I grew up in Canada and I didn't have to go through much of what my sisters and brothers, my brethren are going through and continue to go through back home, I, f I felt privileged. I felt like even though I grew up not wealthy, my mother was working in a warehouse to put us through, to, to feed us. We, I went to university by working full time and taking student loans. I felt privileged because I didn't need to worry about my safety. I didn't need to worry about my dignity. I didn't need to worry about what would happen to me when I leave my house to go to school. These are fears that my sisters and brothers are going through back home. <sighs> Even my aunt, Siti Rarir Kranga, and Tandatangaji uh, Rakade, and she pulled them out of school. She decided that my cousins were not going to go to school because she was scared that they would get raped on the way to school. So I feel privileged to have grown up in Canada. I feel privileged to have had all the opportunities that that great country offered. I feel privileged to have had the opportunity as an immigrant who came into that country to have the opportunity to participate in anything I chose to participate in and today be a member of parliament in the highest house of representatives in Canada. So because of that privilege, I had this desire in me to serve my community. And the importance of community service. Really, Mela, Apama, Chinale Uti Vachade, Upome Ilman Alave, Samuhat, Samuhan Alangala Munurti Vela Sayavanamande, Makal Kenda Sayalamo Sayavanamande, Ave Avenge. They were an example. That's what they did. Growing up, our house was an open house. Anybody who needed refuge, anybody who was new to the country, first point of stop, so we were always there to help them. Anybody needed support with their immigration cases, my dad was there. So I learned how to be a member of parliament from my parents, because that's what they did. They served the community when I was a child, and I knew that this is what I needed to do as well. So I got involved with the students' movement. Um, all through my life, I was on middle school later, and I was on every single sports team possible. I was on every extracurricular club and this and that, everything. But when I got to university, I, I, I was on the varsity basketball team for University of Toronto. And then I was also elected in my first year as the vice president of the Tamil Students Association. And I served two years as vice president of the Tamil Students Association at U of T. And I really got a true understanding of how we could grow the Tamil community and increase the awareness of the richness and wealth that we have as Tamil youth in Toronto. So we actually started a, an annual show called Suvadakal with a booklet and 
now, I'm aging myself again, but it's okay, you already know how old I am. Um, so this was in 2000, so 10, 11 years ago. It's something that we do, that the, the students at U of T, University of Toronto, continue to this day at the Arendelle campus. Every year there's an annual release of the work, written work, of our Tamil youth who study at the University of Toronto, and then Calibra as well. And so we're able to start a tradition. We put those in the Mudal Suvadagal Nangal Palchanale, and the celebration continue one another. Um, but I didn't last at U of T too long. I didn't like that university. So I left and I went to Carleton and I served as the vice president of the uh, Carleton University Students Union, Students Association, which is the students association that represented all of the 20,000 students at the university. And my election is funny, you'll get to clap in a minute. Um, I had just moved to the university in September and by late October, November, I had decided that this current students that were there, not it, not good enough for me because it was good. The president was a black man. One of the vice presidents was a black woman. Everybody else was white. One white woman and three white male men. So I felt, what this is not representative of my university. My university had plethora of races and ethnicities represented, but that diversity wasn't represented in the executive of the student movement, student union at my university. So I decided I was gonna run. And later I ran, I won. At first year student running in an election and winning is kind of unheard of, but because I, we built a good solid team and I was actually the first brown woman to run at that school and win in an election. So it's about breaking barriers. And the second year I ran in the election again, um, and guess what? I had three young Indian women running against me. That's amazing. I wasn't complaining. I was happy to have those sisters run against me because that means that they are now not afraid to put their name forward and they don't feel that they need to stay in the background and watch as others told them what was important for them. They felt empowered to be able to run themselves. So I'm happy to have been able to help. Then I moved into the labor movement. So um, when I was doing my master's at Queen's University, are we running out of time? Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, I worked with um, the Justice, the Service Employees International Union. It's a union that's here in the United States as well. And uh, I was the lead researcher for the Justice for Janitors campaign. Campaign that sought to organize janitorial cleaning staff to ensure that our large corporations weren't taking advantage of the migrant workers, the temporary workers, usually women who are these cleaning staff and that they were paid good wages so that they could actually have enough money to take home and feed their families. And they weren't scared that if they talk one thing wrong, they were gonna lose their job and lose their livelihood. So I worked in the student movement, the labor movement, and always there was a theme of social justice and being there to be the voice for the voiceless or people who were oppressed and marginalized. Um, I really haven't touched on my election. I thought I had more time. Clearly I'm not good at watching time. Um, but I have to talk about the, Tamil, the, the election itself and the importance for me to run because I had been asked to run a couple times before by the NDP, the New Democratic Party, and um, I didn't feel I was ready, but this time 
I felt that I needed to run. I needed to step up. As a, while I was still considered a youth by the UN definition, I needed to run. As a young woman and as a racialized woman, it was time for me to run now and not wait until later in life because we needed to make sure that other youth in our community, racialized youth, feel that they could run as well. So for me, the Tamil community had done so much in Canada. Over the last 30 years, maybe Tamils had been in Canada, contributed so much to the economic development and the cultural fabric of the country, but we had absolutely no representation at the federal level or the provincial level, mind you. So it was time, and the time was now, when we had over 300,000 Tamils living in Canada we had no representatives. So I felt it was time for somebody to run, and I knew that that somebody was going to be me, and I had to step up, and this was the election to do it. So this election was a historic election for us. We, in Scarborough Rouge River, in, in the country, we elected the very, very first time that the New Democratic Party, as the official opposition, the largest official opposition in Canada's history, the official opposition that ensured that Quebec, the province that wanted to separate, was actually not, a, that's not a separatist province anymore. They actually, in this election, proved that they want to be part of Canada, want to be represented by a truly federalistic party. And the reason I won was because the entire community came out to support me. The Tamil community, the Indo-Caribbean community, the Filipinos, the Chinese, the Indians, everybody in the local community in Scarborough came out to support me because they saw me as somebody who they could relate to. When I went and knocked on their door, they'd open the door and be like, hey, I know you from somewhere. And I was like, okay, well, I'm involved with the youth, I'm involved with the residents in the community, so people knew me as an advocate who was already doing stuff for the community. So that's, I really do believe, a really good reason that I'm here today. And of course, the international support that I got, of course, helped as well. The hundreds of thousands of support, people who I was getting support from all over the world. The, the diaspora Tamil community really, really pumped me up whenever I needed some help. So thank you all. Thank you for that kind of support. I'm going to make one final comment. Um, the English, there's a saying that uh, united we stand, divided we fall. So let's. In the election, one day, we have a very Tamil people are not going to be able to do this. Canada is not going to be able to do this. We have a very good time. Innum pala pala paral mandra urupanerhal, um, Congress people, um, senators, members of legislative assembly, municipal councillors. We need to have many, many more. We need to have representatives at all levels of our government in order for governments, rep respective governments, in order for us to really be able to contribute to meaningful, lasting, sustainable change that we can have an impact on in the countries that we live in, but also to tie it back to our brothers and sisters who continue to struggle back home. To be able to help, truly help, and work towards creating a lasting solution, a lasting peace, we need to integrate ourselves into the systemic processes in our respective countries to ensure that we are able to advocate at all levels, whether it's diplomatically, act, through diplomacy, through activism, through community engagement. So I go to high schools and talk to youth about getting active in our local communities. Because as we get our youth active in the microcosms, the micro communities, they're going to be able to contribute to lasting change that'll have a ripple effect across the country. Like that seven-year-old, that seven-year-old who contributed towards a Tamil school that's now 17 years later still thriving.
our youth in our communities will change our future. Our youth today are the leaders, not of tomorrow, but of today, and we need to embrace that. Thank you all so much. I know I've really run out of time. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for indulging me, and I hope that we'll be able to chat. Please stay in touch. Thank you very much.